so here it is then so this is the life series iceberg i thought originally it was uh limited to just limited life but it's not this is the entire thing so we're going to go through it top to bottom if you are unfamiliar with what an iceberg is basically it's a big frozen thing in the ocean no, i'm joking um an iceberg in terms of internet context is basically where you go through um the kind of commonly known theories and conspiracies and things like that regarding any franchise and the further down you go the weirder and weirder and weirder it gets so um yeah let me if i maybe if i zoom out on this then i can sort of scroll through it a bit more so i'm intrigued to see how much of this i know and how much of it i don't so first firstly green owns the life series yeah basically green green conceptualized the life series and um he was on that kind of pulled everybody together for it and he kind of gets like first and final say on everything so that's good um aha i've only just noticed that there <laughs> i guess that's why we've got the hourglass here nice uh repeat teammates yeah it's um i think repeat teammates was touched on really nicely by impulse and skiz on their podcast um even talking in tango as well is that basically people tend to gravitate to one another again and again and again like you know me and ren because we enjoy working together and like like they said it's very much you've got the drama kids and then you've got like the it tech kids like there's a difference in style of content so you can understand why people merge together you know what i mean uh name changes i guess the name changes is just pertaining to each season's a different name correct me if i'm wrong in any of these uh 5 a.m pearl is obviously from the double double like no last life is it was it double or last for 5 a.m pearl but that was in there double it was double okay cool uh animatics the animatics are great half of my react uh, half of my clips or shorts channel is uh animatics they are fantastic and genuinely i saw scar tweet earlier on today saying like i've got a confession like my favorite part of the life series is the fan art and it's kind of true honestly it really really is um for me it's the fan art as well as the theories like i really like that kind of bundle because on my pov which i don't think you'll find on any of the other povs we have more narrative and more kind of stakes at play which is quite nice uh and then of course the canary curse if you're not familiar basically canary birds were used uh in olden days when you would go down into a mine and it would be able to detect things like carbon monoxide and stuff like that so if the canary bird ever stopped singing or it died you would know that there was something in the air which was going to be toxic and lethal to uh humans and basically timmy is the canary of the life series because timmy has gone out first every single season even including limited life which is uh interesting uh moving further on the iceberg now so we were sky high everybody knows about this stuff for the most part oh and of course scar scams as well he always has a scab he's always got some kind of contract some kind of deal that he's absolutely not going to uphold um and that's that so now we move on to the iceberg which we're, we're stood on it we're looking around we're dipping a toe in the water going that's bloody freezing not a chance um and the first thing we've got is you bet which you can't see under my camera but you bet now what does that mean what does you bet mean let me know in the chat and we'll circle back to it uh etho is washed up <laughs> very new revelation uh etho is uh washed up is basically an ongoing joke between the clockers and ties um it, it basically saying that etho's pvp skills are washed up which i don't think gems video from hermitcraft has helped you know soften the blow of at any point you bet your life from last life so which game was that because there was dare to flare in third life but what was you bet your life what what did that uh entail and that's for you bet oh it's you bet your life sorry that's all one word sorry yeah uh the clockers family tree i mean it's on the iceberg and i think the reason it's there is because nobody truly understands it am i an uncle am i a godfather am i the clock father still absolutely no idea oh yeah the big one the big uh bet your life the one that lizzie won yes sorry i do remember that now yeah god she cashed in her like bet and won it within like minutes that was really really good that was really cool uh jelly pandas of course scar had uh for the pandas in his sanctuary um he had all of the pandas look like his cat jelly pretty funny uh affirmation station i love that that name is stuck by the way i love that um affirmation station obviously in the most recent series limited life that is skizzle man's uh weekly hype up um his like you know his affirmation or his admiration it should be called the admiration station really um but basically telling each of the players what he likes about it or what he likes about them why he appreciates them 
Uh, the helmet rule, of course, means not wearing any helmets in the series. Um, I'm actually surprised that we maybe didn't bring that back for this season. I think because we've gone a few seasons not wearing helmets, even though we've gone for a minimized armor set on a resource pack this time around, I think the reason we've left helmets off is because on even on hard mode with protection one on just chest downwards you do still survive tnt blasts so i think that's why we decided to keep it off we did a little bit of experimenting and kind of came to the conclusion that like yeah that's probably the way to roll uh monopolies there's always some kind of monopoly whether it is types of wood gunpowder sugarcane whatever it may be the enchanter in itself is a single item uh <laughs> monopoly in uh last life so that was that was interesting very interesting and i'm pretty sure that's everything for that one now we start to head underwater we make our way beneath the surface of the cold cold blistering freezing lake or ocean that is the life series and we begin with tilly so tilly uh was pearl's dog her one and only her truly trusted companion um, and basically, the death of Tilly sparked what is now known as 5am Pearl. It was the final thing that made uh, that made Pearl snap. Uh, and obviously, a new bit of trivia that has come to light recently is that I cremated Tilly after Tilly perished. So there you go. That's what happened there. Uh, secret soulmates. So is secret soulmates maybe where people were teaming up in double life even though they weren't actually tied to one another? Um by like you know the the invisible threads that are it is okay cool good i understand that uh cows i'm guessing cows is just it's always the food source it's always one of the many not even so much monopolies but people really put a big weight and credence on the cows because their saturation is decent green and bigby specifically for secret soulmates okay cool gotcha uh green kills his allies yeah happens pretty often <laughs> <laughs> happens pretty often sometimes intentionally more often than not just accidentally so there you go uh hard mode is funny because every series so far and maybe even in this season we always forget to put it on hard mode at the beginning of the season and there'll be kills that should have worked in the first few episodes with tnt or even melee or whatever um and they didn't work because we forgot to put it on hard mode it was either on normal i don't think it's ever been on easy but it's been on normal um so there you go modified recipes which is what this thing over here is so modified recipes being uh simplified recipes to ensure that monopolies aren't quite as dangerous or simply just to allow people to not have to grind so much because that is so much waste of time making nothing you know what i mean like if you're waiting ages for sugarcane and uh or not so much sugarcane but for gunpowder and the like because sugar king can kind of grow passively in the background it's basically a means of ensuring that we play for three hours two two and a half whatever it is and we're actually getting to do things the whole time we're not just waiting around yeah maximizing tnt output basically um i don't know what this one is are these two separate things because the font size is different barbecue rub and pizza or is that barbecue rub pizza i don't know what that one means at all and then the time inconsistencies is i'm assuming for limited life where where people aren't on the times that they expect or for example when scar logged out at the end of his episode when he turned red it meant that he wasn't actually on for like the final 15 to 20 minutes oh it's for pizza the llama so what's the barbecue rub bit about oh wait no pizza is just pizza but then what's barbecue rub barbecue rub is impulse and b-dubs from double life is that what they were called they were called barbecue rub <laughs> <laughs> barbecue rub was something to do with blaze power what barbecue rub was a deal between ren and mumbo there there are a lot of conflicting stories here i don't know which one of them's real they're all getting committed to this video but that's hilarious but this is what happens dude the further down the iceberg you go the deeper into the depths of the ocean you travel the more the more convoluted they get did you know there's actually a mew hidden underneath the woodland mansion a friend of mine told me that on the playground and i'm pretty sure it's real he said he's got it on his game boy and he's going to bring it in next week so we'll see i'm pretty sure that's it just wait until the ssm pulls into the uh into the coral isles that'd be a bit mad wouldn't it barbecue rub means blaze powder it mean it was meant to be hot sauce but they changed it okay okay now we go deeper this is my territory the watchers 
so the watchers for those people that are unaware is a separate narrative that is running in the background or i guess in my in my sense the foreground um of the life series which is basically do the voice okay i'll do the voice hold on um we are people who speak in rhyme we do it all the time we like to have a shot of vodka salt and then some lime they are basically uh originally from the evo series so minecraft evolution was a series that myself Gree and timmy big b a bunch of other people were all in um and the way that Gree and transitioned out of that series when he wanted to leave was by the way of rewriting the end credits of the dragon fight um and basically altering it so that there were two beings that were because i can't remember what they're called in the original credits i don't know if it's just like player one and two or something like that but it changed to be watcher one and watcher two and the watchers were basically a personification of uh the audience basically so when green left the idea was that we all went to do the dragon fight together and the cheeky watchers pulled us all into individual dragon fights and then when we came back one of us was missing and that missing person was green um and green uh and myself wrote a you know a bunch of stuff for the watchers in the lead up to it and then because it was Grian's idea and then I was assisting with writing like the cryptic books and stuff and then Grian I think Grian solely wrote the whole um the whole credit sequence um and yeah basically the idea of the watchers now is that the life series is a repeating cycle of death games um and that basically the watchers are the ones doing that so when Grian left there was another entity that came into existence and make it made itself known to myself and timmy called the listeners um who may be further down this document i'm not sure but basically the listeners weren't happy with uh what the watchers had done by taking one of the players out of the world um and since then there's been this kind of like power struggle between the two and kind of the loose idea is that the watchers are punishing so basically we tried to flee the players that were still around tried to flee by way of help of the listeners uh, but the idea is that the life series is a, a looping death game where basically the watchers are punishing people that tried to flee uh and then the idea that green is involved in the series is that green um became a watcher didn't like what was going on there it's much more elaborate the law than this but basically green now inserts himself into the games to be a bit of a disruptor um and basically that's the the law the law is quite complex but this law specifically the watchers law um, I actually answered the question this afternoon about it is that this is basically just uh, an AU, an alternate universe. Um, it's basically a full law that is only digested from my perspective. And it's basically just an offshoot from the original Watcher listener stuff. Um, so it's not canonical to anybody else's experience and stuff like that. It's very much something that I enjoy watching. I think people enjoy uh, participating in the law and theory crafting and stuff like that. Um, so yeah that's always the best thing to categorize the watchers as we know it now as is very much uh is very much an au um because i think i think some people think that the watchers stuff is canon to the life series but obviously it was green's baby and i've just done an offshoot from it because that was what somebody was asking they were saying like oh well why don't you do xyz with green and it's like well green's a player first and foremost so i don't want him to feel as though he has to do anything to play into it all I took custody. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more about Watcher Listener stuff, we've done a few live streams about it. It's all on Tumblr as well. Um, it's a fun little concept and it continues to go on. Um, and then I also have my VTuber lore as well, uh, which kind of runs uh, alongside that. But that's more personal to me. Anyway, S tier Scar. Uh, I mean, I've seen the MLG Bucket Clutch. Uh, Scar is pretty S tier. Is there any more to that? I'm not sure. Scott versus Joel. A repeated pattern of combat if we're honest i mean even in the most recent limited life episode we've seen that uh the dark oak saplings is funny because the dark oak saplings was basically green thought he had a monopoly on dark oak saplings we found a bunch more trees in the corner of the map this was during war oh, third life i want to say it was third life um and basically we went over did a magic trick where we were like surprised there's more of them and he just like flipped out <laughs> uh the crassle coffins so there was a point of interest a poi in third life called uh the crassle uh which is where b-dubs resided and the joke was that the crassle was small and it was all a bit of a euphemism for penis that we all joked about a lot of the time um but then there was a point where i don't remember who it was someone can clue me in 
but somebody built coffins outside of the crassel so beds with trapdoors flipped up around them and that was like a really haunting visual it was scar yes yeah, so scar basically was trying to sell people coffins which was just brilliant another scar scheme basically uh the green lives club so the green lives club was supposed to be a secret society of the remaining green life players uh during last life that would live beneath the central spawn point of uh the world the service so wherever we started where we'd stand in that circle at the beginning and where originally the enchanter was supposed to stay um the idea was that we were going to have a secret base underneath that it got relocated in the end to somewhere further away but very quickly it was trapped by other people uh tango's rage i'm not 100 percent sure on what is tango's rage and then i do know uh uh ario ario saw 11 so ario saw 11 basically does really good and really concise um recap episodes and summarizations of the various sessions during the different life series and they do really cool infographics they post them on social media and they make everything a bit more digestible because there are so many moving parts in the life series that is basically what um ario swords videos aim to do is to kind of like you know tie everything together and give you a sense of what's going on if you can't watch every pov because let's be honest there's sometimes upwards of 14 of them and they can be almost an hour long each it's too much to ask of anyone <laughs> so yeah it's good um tango raged during last life when b-dubs betrayed him and during double life when scar burned the ranch oh okay yeah so it's it's basically when tango snaps tango is scary when he snaps but in like a fun way um tango's final double life moments you'll have to remind me what happened there because i don't know if i was present for that uh martin's law i love that that's spelt with an i instead of a y rate that <laughs> even my spelling is deep down at the darkest crust of the uh <laughs> <laughs> the bottom there um some people saying go home so what what was go home tangle's final tango's final double life moments did he just say the words go home it's over let me have a look where is he tango tech uh double life finale let's have a look is that it did he only get oh you only did five episodes in the end right let's have a quick look at what this is um let me pull this up to here so let me see the very end of it. Oh, it's over. Go home. Right, gotcha. Damn. Dude was doing Watcher Law and he didn't even know it. <laughs> very similar styling there, isn't it? Jeez. Uh, okay. So yeah, we got the double life moment. Uh, the village people. The village people were basically uh, the collective... Um, that were in third life and they basically lived in the village that we had it was the only it was the only npc village we had in the whole of third life and it was in the i want to say it was the northwestern no no northeast no northwestern corner of the map i want to say it was uh only a short distance away from the uh from the ren chanting dog warts site which was pretty cool um so that was interesting yellow snow was that a joke that i made that feels like a joke that i would make was that a joke that i made during one of the episodes i can imagine that being the case it was or was it not oh it was the horse scar's horse was called yellow snow right okay gotcha fair 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 and which series was that in in last life gotcha okay cool uh etho never changes his skin true facts I think that should be sky high, actually. I don't think that deserves to, it deserves to be down here. Uh, Dare to Flare is a game from Third Life uh, in which you had to traverse uh, re repetitively falling lava or pouring lava in order to get an item out of the chest at the end of the obstacle course and get all the way back out, of which I think I might have been one of the only successful people to do it because there were rules on the wall but there were the rule about an ender pearl wasn't in there so that was quite funny and i got some like feather falling boots from it or something like that um and he ended up having to continually update the rule board until eventually i think one or two people died playing it and that was quite funny um and then of course uh there's martin's law which i think is the watcher listener stuff as well as my vtuber stuff and i still to this day i'm not answering the question about whether they are linked who knows it's very deep down very deep down um second life so second life simply put was going to be potentially the name of the current series which is limited life um 
And the, the only reason we didn't really go for it is because there was a pre-existent chat room uh, or, you know, website called Second Life. And we were worried about the SEO clashes with that. Even though I said, like, you know, Afterlife SMP never struggled with that. So, um, you know, we sort of just went with it. I can't believe this is on here. Bad maths. <laughs> bad maths not only have they spelled my name wrong but they've also highlighted some of my worst moments at the bottom of this thing bad maths is basically the recognition that i am awful uh in game in real life i've got incredible accuracy when it comes to throwing catching all that sort of stuff um but bad maths is basically the fact that i am unable to gauge distances i mean you saw my ender pearl throw right look at my ender pearl throw trying to get up to tango on on their tower in the last uh, limited life episode it went up and down didn't even reach the tower uh punching cleo off of the mountain or the the, the sort of the, the platforms reaching over to the bleeding heart bastion um also really bad maths so yeah i did punt somebody to their death by doing that so my bad uh evil anvil so evil anvil is uh somebody who makes songs isn't it pretty sure is it songs or animations i'm fairly certain it's songs evil anvil life series I put Envil Anvil, my bad. It's songs, right? Yeah, it is. It's, it's songs that have been created. And some of them are really, really good. They've even done a song which is a remix of our reactions to one of their songs, which is just bonkers. If you want to look it up, it's called uh, I Turn Third Life Into a Song Featuring All Third Lifers. It's very good. Um, we have got Dragon, Ogre, and Taxes. I, that sounds like something Ren would say, but I don't recall this. Scott hates the watches. Okay, well, yeah, we'll come back to the dragon one. Oh, those were the names of Lizzie's dogs from Last Life. I feel like this isn't really the best uh, iceberg ever, if I'm honest. I feel like a lot of this stuff is quite known and in really strange orders. Like, I feel like the watches should be way further down because only if you watch my POV do you know of it. Um, but yeah, so that was their dogs. I think I killed one of those dogs, if memory serves, or I punched one at the very least. Um, Skiz is always out third. I didn't know that. Was that the case this time? Hold on. Uh, limited life wiki. No, Joel was out third this time, right? Wasn't Skiz out second? Yeah, Skiz was out second this time. So that one's been broken. Interesting. Um, and then with Scott hating the watchers, basically that was Scott's refusal in last life to participate with the boogeyman. Um... So yeah, basically... Oh no, sorry. Skiz was out second. I, maybe I misspoke. Um... But yeah, basically, Scott hates the watches is that Scott has, has been the boogeyman, but previously didn't participate. And the reason for that was that Scott was going to go down to a red life anyway by the beginning of the next session. Um, so what was the point? You know what I mean? Like it was there, there, there was no point. It was just going to happen anyway. Um, so yeah, there you go. That was that one. Um, winners. Oh, wait, wait. Is this all one word? Winners theory, pale white horse alternate universe. Winner, I'm going to have to Google this. Winner's Theory Pale White Horse AU. Is it two things? Is it Winner's Theory? So wait, what? what's Winner's Theory? If you want to clue me up on both of those, I'll look up uh, Life Series White Horse AU. Let's have a look. White Horse AU. Oh man, there's some angsty art here. The thematic of Sun, Star and Moon sun moon stars i think winner's theory is that they're all the only ones that remember oh is that what that is oh ah, interesting i mean from my perspective from my law they all remember everything but it's the negative emotions and the panic and the fear and the betrayal and everything like that are the the, the sort of the feelings the emotions that are fed on by the watchers between the different death games um and everybody retains their memories, which is why we can refer to different traps and things like that. But because they eat all of those things, all of those resentments are gone, allowing for a clean reset and to go again. Um, so, yeah, that's my take on it, but still. Um, but, yeah, what's what's the horse thing? Pale white horse is on Tumblr, I think. Scar dies early and green joins dog warts, I think. Hmm. An AU that changes the story of Third Life and makes Scar be eliminated by Ren. Therefore, Grian joins Dog Warts and chaos happens. But it's so angsty that you will cry. Oh, interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. I'll have to give it a little read. We can read it on stream if it's good. All oh, the listeners are in here. Okay, cool. So the listeners 
um, are actually in, or at least their presence is felt in Limited Life. We've not spoken about this yet, but we will probably post-season. Uh, but the listeners are basically the counterpart to the Watchers. Um, and I won't go too much into who they are and what they are, but they originate from the Evo series. They were trying to help liberate the players and get them away from the ogling eyes of... Uh, the watchers who wanted to see the players go through each of the various minecraft versions in minecraft evo um and the listeners were basically what it was was the, the watchers were in a way demanding and then the listeners came as a sympathetic ear you know all the sort of symbolism stuff and the idea of the listeners is that they were listening to what the players wanted whereas the watchers just wanted to see what they wanted to see um so it was kind of slightly souring the intent of what the watchers were from Grian's initial conception and making them a bit more a bit more spooky and nasty in my version of events so there you go uh terry nobody know this is why terry's so low down the iceberg nobody knows who terry is terry was the first ever cameo in the life series forget you know gem playing as cleo and lizzie as pearl like terry is the is the rogue player don't know who terry is nobody will ever know soz but pulling back the curtain for a second terry was basically big b when he went into witness protection during one of the plot threads um croak frog pet dog burn log was the chant that myself and big b did to try and summon uh 5 a.m pearl or what was becoming 5 p uh, 5 a.m pearl at that time it was basically just a very jumping around the bonfire basically being a bit maniacal kind of chant so there you go uh who burnt the wall that was from last no last or third i want to say it was last life i want to say who burnt the wall was last oh was it third oh okay so basically who burnt the wall was uh timmy and scott were living in the corner of the map they had like their little like like flower canyon thing whatever it was uh, and the question was, who burnt the wall? And it was Joel. Yeah, the hobbits in third life. Yeah, that was what that was. Right then, moving down. How how much further does this go? Oh, not, not too much further. Okay. The Blue Sword Boys. One of the gravest betrayals and weakest alliances that has ever been forged in this entire life series was me giving up diamonds to both Grian and to Bigby for honor and for protection and alliance right the way until the very end all the way to the very end and i don't think any of those alliances came to fruition in the end i guess bigby stayed with us but that felt like bigby was staying with me more out of like just location <laughs> bigby lived next door to us so that's why he stuck around with us but Grian never uh never honored the blue sword boys thing it was episode one i found some diamonds i gave them to them nothing else happened uh scars crystals is an interesting one so from the last life series scar created a wizard's tower at the top of uh, a mountain and was basically running another one of his scams where he was selling various kinds of crystals we're talking love crystals like you know don't kill me crystals there were there was all kinds of ones like they were they were bizarre scars crystals actually worked did they though which which ones worked Let me, let me know which ones worked. We'll circle back to that. But that's basically one of Scar's scams from the series. Uh, Boogie. So Boogie is the Boogeyman. Boogeyman is the concept uh, that was introduced in Last Life, I want to say it was. Whereby once per episode, there is somebody chosen very early on in the session to become the Boogeyman. The Boogeyman um, gets a free pass regardless of what color life they are on um to kill another player and in the most recent season the limited life version means that the time taken from the other player and the time rewarded to the boogeyman is doubled now the whole concept and the whole worrying thing with the boogeyman and the reason people do act upon it is because if you fail your mission as the boogeyman to acquire a kill before the end of the session you go down to the next tier in the next episode so in this season for example in limited life it was basically um that uh you go from say you know 24 hours you start off with and you would drop down at what was it 18 hours or something like that if say you're on like 21 hours and you didn't get a boogie kill then you'll go right the way down uh to there oh it's boogie blockers oh sorry well boogie blockers was basically a business was it me did i set up boogie blockers i feel like i set up a business to block the boogie i don't think i ever actually did it though 
But boogie blockers would have been pretty cool. But yeah, but either way, it's good to explain what the boogeyman is anyway. For anybody catching this when they've only watched like one life series and stuff like that. You wanted to but never did. Okay, fair. Fair, fair, fair. Um, oh, that's also Scar's Crystals actually worked. Yeah, okay, fair. Um, what else we got? Joel is the most evil last lifer. Yeah, dude's always on a rampage every season. I don't think that's a secret to anyone, honestly. Is the boogie still in limited life because everyone is red? Yep. I, uh, yeah, it just rolls every week regardless. Uh, Skizzer's best hair. <laughs> what is this? I don't remember Skizzer's hair when they were team best. I remember team best and setting up their TNT cannon service, but I don't remember the hair. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Martin's Red Springs. Oh, okay. So this was a, uh, martin's red springs was basically a plot that i was going to enact where basically i would betray ren and the whole plot the whole thing i would say in chat is winter is over and spring has begun and basically it was going to be a case of i kill off ren and then i take over um but given the improvised nature and the total chaos of the series um is basically that never came to came to fruition so I shared that on a live stream once that like, oh, that's a thought that I had or something cool to do. You know what I mean? Um, so there you go. Uh, do, 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 do is the bloody horns from Double Life. Annoying as hell. Never want to hear them again. Sonam uh, is pictured in this screenshot here uh, is the uh, data pack or plugin developer for the life series. No, no big secret there. I don't think. Uh, the between season sleep. So this I think stems from my law rather than anybody else's. And it's the idea that between each of the series, um, the players are thrown into basically a limbo where they are um, asleep and the watchers will feed on all those negative emotions and almost like kind of get them back to a reset point. Um, and basically that is the, the concept there. So we are just continually living these games again and again and again. Uh, Scar's Cut Death. What's Scar's Cut Death? What's that one? scars cut death and then love crystal yeah what did who did i have a love crystal i feel like i had a love crystal and i lost it i could be wrong though scar died to magma block i think oh what sky died, died to a magma block off screen oh what in, in third life an off-screen death that was reset due to technical issues. Hmm. Very interesting. You want to know a secret? There was another cut scar death in third life. And it was at my hands. <laughs> it was at my hands. I can't remember where it was or when it was. But, um... Well, I remember where it was, but I can't remember what episode or what sort of time it was at. But it was, um, it happened very early in the episode. The only thing I remember is it happened at the Crassel. And Scar had gone in there, caused the ruckus. I was outside doing my usual slinking around. And Scar comes out all hyped up after, like, slapping a few people in there with swords or, like, whacking it around the flint and steel. And then he just charges at me. And I was like... Do I kill you here? And I, I can't remember if it was like the last life he had. I don't know if he was red and then came out and then I bopped him. But the whole... I think because everyone was so hyped up and amped up in that moment, it just made for a very awkward exchange where we almost had this kind of like awkward silence and standoff. Um, and we ended up going like, no, actually, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Or like that wouldn't mean that Scar doesn't have much of an episode and this, that and the other. Um, but I pinky promise, and I don't fuck around when I say this, that is the only death that we've ever gone nah on. Um, other than like if there's a technical glitch. But that's the only death that we've done where it's like, um, where we were like, no, like let's, let, let's reset that. Um, so yeah, so there you go. And then that doesn't really help the final point at the bottom of it's all scripted because... So many things happen. There are so many coincidences, this, that, and the other, that it seems as though the series has to be scripted. But I, again, pinky promise, it's not scripted. We we play the game. We go absolutely nuts with it. There are too many moving parts, and we are not good enough actors or organized minds to pull off such 
such ridiculous scenarios and such silly deaths and everything like that there is just it's just it, it's just too much honestly um so yeah so there you go you got a big old secret at the end of this video but that is the life series iceberg top to bottom most of it i knew which i'm quite excited about i was expecting it to be more like offshoot stuff if you really wanted to digest pale white horse au i can compile something for you to look through on stream the art for it's fantastic i'm so down i'm so down yeah let's do it so there you go iceberg complete 